If you've been taking supplements for anxiety, depression, brain fog, or low energy, but you aren't getting the results you hoped for, well then this video is for you. Because today, we're gonna to talk about the top three nutrients that people commonly get wrong for mental health. And these nutrients are popular, widely available, and often recommended. But when taken without considering your genetics, or your biochemical individuality, they can either underperform or actually make things worse. So the top three nutrients we'll focus on are gonna be the B vitamins, vitamin D, and my personal favorite, magnesium. These nutrients are critical for neurotransmitter production, methylation, inflammation regulation, and overall brain health. But to get the full benefits, you need to consider genetic variations that impact absorption, conversion, and cellular utilization. And that is what we're gonna to uncover today in this video, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board-certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize your mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So let's start with the B vitamins. You see, B vitamins are foundational for mental health because they support the methylation cycle, energy production, and neurotransmitter synthesis. But not all B vitamins are created equal and not all bodies can handle them the same way. So let's start with B12. Vitamin B12 is essential for neurological function and mood. But I'll often hear clients say, I took B12 and felt worse. And symptoms could include things like anxiety, racing thoughts, insomnia, irritability, and even heart palpitations. So why does this happen? Well, one major reason is the form and dose. Methylcobalamin, the methylated form of B12, is powerful. But for some people with a slow COMT or MAOA, slow variant, too much methyl B12 can overstimulate the brain by increasing dopamine and norepinephrine levels. And in those cases, gentler forms like hydroxycobalamin or adenosylcobalamin are actually better tolerated. And then there's folate or B9, and this is another big player. And if you have an MTHFR mutation, especially the C677T or the A1298C variant, your ability to convert folic acid into the active 5-MTHF is reduced. And if you flood your system with synthetic folic acid or too much methylfolate, you can actually create a traffic jam in your methylation cycle. And this can lead to emotional volatility, fatigue, or even worsening depression. And in these cases, using low-dose methylfolate or switching to folinic acid can actually be helpful. Then there's B6, especially in its active form P5P or pyridoxal 5-phosphate. B6 is crucial for converting amino acids into neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and GABA. So low B6 status can contribute to anxiety, irritability, insomnia, and poor stress tolerance, which are all common symptoms in those with mental health challenges. It also plays a critical role in the methylation cycle, helping to convert homocysteine into cysteine and supporting downstream detox and neurotransmitter balance. And when genetic variants like MTHFR, MTR, or CBS are present, and you focus only on B12 or B9 while neglecting B6, it can create imbalances or traffic jams in the methylation pathway. And B2 or riboflavin is another often overlooked cofactor that activates MTHFR itself. So without adequate B2 and B6, methylation can become inefficient or dysregulated, even if B12 and your folate levels are optimized. So in other words, skipping B2 and B6 while supplementing your methyl donors can actually worsen symptoms like anxiety, brain fog, or fatigue, especially in those with genetic vulnerabilities. And now let's not forget about choline, which is technically not a B vitamin, but it works very closely with them. You see, choline is essential for producing acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter that's needed for memory, attention, and mental focus. 
It also acts as a methyl donor, supporting your methylation cycle. And genetic variants in PEMT, CHDH, MTHFD1, and even MTHFR can increase your choline requirements and about 90% of Americans don't get enough choline from their diet. And though food sources like egg yolks, liver, and beef are excellent sources of choline, many people will still benefit from targeted supplementation with forms like cetocholine or CDP choline or alpha GPC, especially if you have those genetic variants. Next up is vitamin D. Vitamin D isn't just for bone health. It acts more like a hormone and plays a vital role in mood regulation, immune system function, and brain plasticity. So low vitamin D levels have actually been linked to depression, anxiety, fatigue, brain fog, and even treatment resistant mood disorders. But here's the twist. Not everyone absorbs or utilizes vitamin D the same way. Your genetics play a major role in determining your needs. So if you have the CYP2R1 variant, you may have trouble converting vitamin D into its storage form, 24-OHD. If you carry a certain GC, uh, which is a vitamin D binding protein gene variant, your ability to transport vitamin D into your tissues, including the brain, may be impaired. And you might have normal serum levels, but low tissue availability. And other genes like VDR, the vitamin D receptor gene, can dramatically influence how well your cells respond to supplementation. And this explains why two people can take the same dose of vitamin D and have very different results. And for these reasons, it's important to choose the right form and dose of vitamin D based on your unique genetic makeup. You see, it's not just about getting more sun or taking a high dose supplement. Your body needs to convert, transport, and activate vitamin D efficiently. And that process relies on more than just the vitamin itself. You'll also want to make sure that you're getting enough of the key cofactors that actually support vitamin D metabolism and utilization, namely magnesium, which helps convert vitamin D into its active form, vitamin K2, which directs calcium into the bones and away from the arteries, and zinc, which plays a supporting role in the vitamin D receptor signaling. So if you're struggling with your symptoms, but your labs look normal, it might be worth looking at your genetic profile to see if there's more going on with vitamin D. And last up, my favorite is magnesium because magnesium is one of the most common deficiencies I see in people struggling with mental health challenges. But I'm not talking about overt hypomagnesemia that you'd catch on standard labs. I'm referring to subclinical magnesium deficiency, where levels are technically within range, but far from optimal for supporting mood, focus, sleep, and resilience. And magnesium is critical for both neurotransmitter synthesis and methylation, which means it plays a direct role in producing serotonin, dopamine, and GABA, as well as helping the body process homocysteine and regulate stress. And if you carry genetic variants that impact methylation or neurotransmitter pathways like COMT, MTHFR, or MAOA, your need for magnesium may be even higher. And what many people don't realize is that magnesium is a cofactor in over 600 enzymatic reactions, including those that calm the nervous system, stabilize your mood, regulate circadian rhythms and sleep quality, and support the activation of vitamin D and B vitamins. So in other words, magnesium is a gatekeeper nutrient. It makes many of your other supplements work better Yet most people are either not getting enough through their diet or they're taking the wrong form for brain health and using poorly absorbed forms like magnesium oxide, which tends to cause GI upset and isn't well utilized by the brain at all. So better forms include things like magnesium glycinate, especially for calming and anxiety support, or magnesium threonate, 
which is superior for cognitive support, but can also support calming the nervous system. And magnesium malate for fatigue and pain. You wanna start magnesium with 200 to 400 milligrams daily and adjust the dose based on your tolerance and symptom response. But remember, magnesium needs increase when you have the gene variants we just mentioned and can also increase when you're stressed, you're not sleeping, or even taking medications like SSRIs or stimulants. So those are the top three nutrients that I want you to start getting right today. And here are my final thoughts on them. B vitamins and choline are critical for methylation, mood regulation, and brain function, but they must be matched to your genetics. Vitamin D is a neuroactive hormone that many people don't metabolize properly due to the genetic variants I mentioned. And magnesium supports neurotransmitter balance and nervous system regulation, yet most people aren't using the right form or dose. So when you take these nutrients without understanding how your body processes them, it's like throwing darts in the dark. But with genetic testing and functional lab work, we can bring in the light so that your supplements actually work for you. So if you're ready to take the guesswork out of your mental health plan, visit levelheadedmind.com to learn more about the genetic testing options that I offer and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my deep dive videos on each of these nutrients. I'll have them linked in the description below. So if this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share it with someone who might benefit. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.